Right, good morning everyone. Welcome back to another video here at North Wake. So this morning I'm just setting up our Weybridge ready for corn. I had a whole video recorded on setting that up yesterday and uh, my camera really let me down. I've been having some issues with the GoPro recently from it um, like not recording and then yesterday I tried to download all my video files. I had 15 files to download and four of them downloaded and the rest of them were non-compatible apparently. So what the hell happened there I do not know. Before I show you that, this is our dung midden, so it's currently empty, all the dung's gone out to the fields where it's going to be spread. So we've got, just we store a few machines in here, we've got the trailers torn down ready for corn harvest. So that's what we're setting the Weybridge up for. One interesting thing I thought I'd show you, just whilst it's here, is one of our 6620s. This one's known as Big Boots, because it's got the wider tyres on. And we have two 6620s. Um, John's actually taken the tyre from this tractor off to a place in Exmouth this morning to get a major repair done on it. Um, it had a big slice down the inside of the tyre. Um, I was hoping to show you guys before he'd taken it, but he's beat me to it. Um, and we patched it twice, and the patch has held for so long, and then it's just finally given up. So that's gone away to have a major repair done. It looked a bit like this, the slice, um, but on the inside wall here, um, I'm pretty sure it's come from our batwing topper the drawbar um, has a nasty piece on it that if you turn too sharp you catch. So that's what's going on with that one. This is the other 6620, slightly older one, called it Little Boots. Um, that one's on a trailer ready for corn. Other Marshall trailer there's ready for corn. We could use the Fleming trailer because uh, it's got the solid sides, but um, we'd have to put a piece of Perspex or something in there to stop it coming out. So you're going to be able to fill it very far the way it is at the moment. Um, because it's got a solid back door as well. Whereas these marshals, um, when they're silage traders, they've not got a solid back door. They've got a, a grid like that one has there. But, um, yeah, that's what's going on with a bit of the machinery at the moment. The new shed, which is behind me, you can probably just see it there above the feeder wagon, is all complete. And I might move some of the fertiliser up into the new store later on because um, I think John wants a bay in the current fertilizer store to tip some cake when that comes uh, from creep feed so we might do that in a bit second cuts in the pit you saw us do that the other day some bales on the front now but uh, we're gonna play with this this is a Griffith Elder mobile way bridge so this was over at the research farm because we weigh all the research silage into the pit um, when we do first cut over there. We would weigh second cut in as well, um, but we're gonna make bales, so we're probably gonna stack the bales back here, um, hence why we brought the bridge back here for that, and also for the corn, because we're gonna weigh the corn in, and also the straw. Um, so this is where I put it, I set it up yesterday, planning on coming down this track. When we come in full, over the way bridge, turn around on this big concrete apron, and then if you look up here, you'll drive straight up, into the new grain store. So there's two roller doors there uh, with two grain stores. Um, so that's where the grain's gonna go. So these way bridges are quite popular. Um, I've seen a couple others around. This is all the wiring it comes with. So I've got to plumb these all together. I think that one runs the box, which is this, it's like a laptop box with all the gubbins inside to the, um, what we call the traffic light, which is the display. So that one runs from there to that one and then these I think there's two wires there they run one between the two way bridges um, so there'll be a bit in the middle we've got to run and then one from the outside to this as well so I'm going to try and set all that up here uh, quickly a minute right so I've got the wire that connects the two bridges together so there's just a little socket in under here it's quite well protected you can't really bash it with anything um, and this short wire goes in between the two what we do next is we take this long wire and there should be another socket either on this end, no, nope, which means it'll be at the other end, just in here. So we undo that one, and then that one runs from there to our box. So we'll go and get the box. Right, so we plug that one in there. These are really, really fragile. The um, pins, I don't think these, these are the female end. See on there, there's some very small holes, they've got to go in a very specific way. You've got to go that way up. Um, in the end of the box here there'll be a set of pins this and that and they are very very fragile 
you've got to be extremely careful you can't force that in there at all it's just got to go and find its own way in and then you don't push it on you just twist that lock there and that's how it connects so that one's plugged in you this box um we've charged it up so it's 100 percent charged at the moment but you can run it with a power leak so you can put power in there if you're going to be using it all day and um, the next thing we need to do is plug in the traffic light um, so that's over there when we're using it it'll be right back by those bales because um, what you need to do is weigh the tractor on here and then weigh your trailer axle separately um, so you need space to be able to drive off and still be, still be able to see the waybridge well that one plugged in there the memory sticks in there there's a little receipt printer in there for printing out all your information as you're going along right i've got it all plugged in so the traffic light plugged in there waybridge is plugged in there i put the traffic light down there because in a minute i'll test it with a tractor it's the moment of truth if this is going to work or not so you hold the green button to turn on Right, so we've got everything plugged in um, on the waybridge and the display is down there as you can see. So it's displaying zero. Um, I think at the minute it's in what we call manual mode. When we use it, when we're doing our um, harvest, we'll probably use the fob so you get the little clickers to start the waybridge up. Um, and to do that, you'd have to go into here um, and options and, and set it all up and you add your tears. Um, so the operation mode at the minute is in basic, so that's fine, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, when you want to set up your fobs, if you do use fobs, you would go here into vehicle setup and you'd add a tear. Um, and before you add a tear, you need to weigh yourself empty because when you add a tear, you need to put it in manually what you weigh. But we're not doing that at the minute, so we're just on basic mode, which is fine. So we just want to know what we weigh. So as you can see, that's all set up, ready to go. On our display over here, we've now got a green arrow and zero, so that means it's all working, it's registering, nothing's on the waybridge at the minute, um, and the green arrow is saying you are free to come onto the waybridge. So I think what I'll do now is grab a tractor and trailer because there's one hooked up there anyway, and we'll give it a little test. Right, so this is the first dummy run I've done, so this could go one of two ways, it either work or it won't. This is how I've envisioned setting this up so you'll come along concrete track behind us which you can't see much because the trailer's there get square on with the waybridge so when I set it up I had my tractor the other day to make sure the tires sort of go between those two big bolts that hold the way cells on so you drive on and you see I don't know if you can see it or not but there's a red cross come up on the uh, on the display stop until that changes it will tell you your weight down there so it says 6.38 tons. So you drive forwards. So what you do now is you drive forward so that the tractor comes off the waybridge and that the trailer axle comes on. And you want that right in the middle, out there somewhere. Again, doing the same thing now. So it's now measuring the weight, 3.22 tons. So then we pull off, nice and gently. I will have to move these bales, I think. I'll just go and park this back in the shed for now. So I'm just running through this all with the Waybridge just to make sure it works because we're hoping to be combining next week so today is Friday hopefully by Tuesday Wednesday Thursday we'll uh, be doing this for real so I'm gonna go over and check the box now I don't know whether I've got it set up on the receipt to print at the minute I can't remember but um, we'll have a look right so this is the screen you get just on the basic mode when you come over to have a look sorry for my microphone here in the shadow can't really do a lot about that so i go menu uh, view records i can see just now when i weighed so i was 6.3 ton on the tractor 3.2 ton on the trailer so that gives me a total of 9.6 tons so i can say print and that should print that out for me but what you would do if you're using the fob mode so we got i think we have four little fobs that you use when we're silaging and they're really easy to use so we can give them to other people um, contractors that they come in and help um, you set this up into fob mode so that when you approach the bridge you press 
button on the fob, the Waybridge screen will go green to allow you to come on. Um, and then you do the same process with it on your way, your tractor, way your trailer, and that collects it all and puts it on the receipt as you go on through the day. So you don't ever have to worry about writing things down. So the only thing you ever have to write down um, for the fobs is your original tear. Um, this isn't gonna print by the way, because I just realized there's no printer paper in there, but normally it would then print it out on a receipt for you. So you would take your 9.6 ton reading there, you go on to um, options, and then, yes you do, vehicle setup, and then you go add tear. So we've got four or five fobs, so that's where your vehicle number comes in. So say you were fob one, um, you'd just press up to get fob one there, and then you press next, and then you add your trailer weight. So we were 9.6 tons there, I think you said, you put that in there, and you press next. And then that allocates your weight to your fob as your tear. So it knows when you weigh, um, it will subtract your tear from your final weight and give you your your net weight for um, whatever's in your trailer. So I'm just gonna cancel this before I set something up I don't want to. But um, I'm quite happy that that's all working. We've got loads of receipt paper, so we'll put a receipt paper in there so that we can use the receipt when we're doing the corn, because that'll be handy. That's working fine, so I'm really happy about that. We have had a little um, issue with the way sales on this but to be fair Griffith Elder have been really really good because they're not local to us at all um, they sent the mechanic out twice once to fix it and then a second time to calibrate it um, which is really good of them um, these things are stupidly heavy they're not going to go anywhere when you drive on them they're not bolted down here um, but you can bolt them down if you want to if you had them fixed um, so yeah we're really happy with them and uh, hopefully they'll perform flawlessly next week when we're combining all right people Front mower on, back mower on, but uh, sadly we're not going mowing. We're just moving them from the new shed over there into uh, our existing machinery shed because they were in one of the bays where I got up with some fertilizer. So just trying to squeeze them into a gap here the best I can. That's the back mower off. There's the second mower off. Right, go start moving some fur. Right, we're in the manor too. First thing I'm doing is changing the hydraulic settings out of comfort because it's just so slow. Uh, let's go dynamic. Right, so now when we use the joystick, so it revs itself up. A bit quicker. <coughs> Right, so we've got one free bay there. Um, Craig's going to move that loader in a minute, not the Massey. And then we've got another free bay there, so I'm going to put I think the night tram. We'll go up the far end where there's not a lot of stuff. Um, and I'll keep these two bays to put the majority of the stuff we don't use all the time. First thing I need to do is get rid of that part bag. That'll have to go on the front, that's got a spike in it. How does Ollie Blogs do this all one handed? See, it's got the thing in the bottom for letting out what you want. You can leave in what you don't. Time being, go over here. Like 
so. Right, so all these blue bags are either Nitram, single top or MCS, which is multi-cut sulfur. Um, so they can all go in the same bay. So I'm just going to lift up as many of the hooks as I can and then I'll store them as the three individual products just to make it easy for when I come to use them. Now we're talking four bags on at once. We, um, we are looking at getting one of those proper bag handlers. That's their real proper name, uh, like bag lifters. Just because they are a bit safer. And also they're the opposite way around to pallet fork. So the lifting bits are on the top so you can get higher to the roof. Um, not that that'll be a problem in this new shed, but. So there we are, first bay done. It doesn't look much in there, but these are the three products we use the most of each year. Um, and we try and run out before we order some more. So there's multi cut sulfur on the left, which goes on all the first cut ground before we mow it. Single top is for the wheat. And then night tram is for um, topping up grass ground for grazing. And also the, um, they put some on the wheat as well last year. Um, so that's all done there. Brakes in the move that loader probably have dinner for me which will be handy and then we'll start filling up this bay here now so we've got several products we've got lime we've got tsp we've got mop and we've got keys right here so we'll put the tsp the mop and the lime probably all together um or i might even put the lime on front of the keys right i'm gonna put that in the bottom bay we've got tons of that that's used to top up um wheat for um sulfur but that's where the single top comes in so since we started using single top we haven't actually used any of that um, but that was bought a long time ago so we'll put that in the bay so it's still there it's still fine to use John's got an empty bay there now that once it's dried out we'll brush it out and he can tip some uh, tip some feed in there right so after dinner we're um, we moved on to the middle bay now I've moved all the keys right yeah, the keys right we've had has been in our store for a long time and I had a lot of trouble with a couple of the old bags. I had one, I don't know if you can see there, there's a white smudge mark on the concrete. Um, just there. I was carrying, carrying up the last bag and all of a sudden the bottom of it just fell out and keys right everywhere. Which is annoying because we've lost the keys right because once it gets in the air it goes bad. Um, and also it's like walking on ball bearings fertilizer so I've swept it all up and scooped it all into a half ton bag and so I've cleared all that in now there's a bag there that's had old fertilizer in it ever since I've worked here so I've got no idea what that is so that will have to go on the muck heap or something or can't really do anything with it these are all the last of the MOP here so they're all bags so they'll go on the front to the use first and that there is TSP so that's all new as well so that's fine I'm quite happy with those bags a little bit of lime in the corner there that will go in front of the uh, keys away. Other than that, we're making good progress and uh, should hopefully get it all done in the next half an hour or so. Ah, look at that! An empty ish shed. So that all there can stay, but there's a lot of recycling. I know it's really messy at the minute, but um, there's some liquid fur um, drums there that have been cleaned that need squashing to go in a bag. Plastic and some old bell wrap cores that got damaged. And then all these part bags of fur. So I'm going to sort this out in a minute, have a bit of a tidy up, see if we can do something with it. So here we are, all done. One bay of night tram and other bits and pieces there. TSP and MOP in the middle. Keys are right and lime on the end. All as neat as it's ever going to be, because as we all know, as neat as it starts, it never stays the same. And then, so this shed, I've never seen this shed empty uh, without anything in it. I've got all the recycling in one corner there to sort out on Monday morning. There's a load of straw, there's a bit of scrap in the back. And yeah, a bit of tidying up and we can put some straw or feed in there for um, for the cabs. So that is me done for the week. I'm on at the weekend, so I'll come in and check the stock. What I might do at the weekend is film a little look around the inside of the new store and the new shed. And then also go around the other buildings here because there's been a lot of new subscribers since I did that last time. So probably do that. Weybridge is all ready for corn harvest hopefully next week so exciting things happening. So thank you guys for watching if you enjoyed the video please remember to give it a thumbs up that really helps get it out to more people. If you're not already then please do hit subscribe um, below the video. Um, we've gone over four and a half thousand subscribers now which is really good. I'm uh, well chuffed with that. If you want to follow me on any of my social media links they will be in the description below and they'll be on the screen now as well for you guys to look at. And uh, See you guys in another video very soon. Cheerio.